Good evening to all of you. Welcome to our third night for this Pentecost Power Conference 2020 with the theme, Thy Kingdom Come. We would like to ask the kingdom of God to manifest in our daily walk and in the sphere of our life. We believe that God called us to be kingdom of God citizens who manifest His grace, redemption, and transformation as we ponder on the series of topics about the kingdom of God. I hope and I pray that you will start to grasp the reality of the kingdom of God in your life. Join me in prayer as we ask the Holy Spirit to teach us this night as we look to our identity as people of kingdom of God. Let's pray. Our King, Lord and Savior Jesus, we recognize that you reign in our life, in our families, in our church, in our city, and in every person who is watching right now. I ask for the mighty conviction of the Holy Spirit to prompt everyone who is joining us in this live stream. We believe that as we declare, Thy kingdom come, we will be more aware and be more conscious of your kingdom that is moving, growing, expanding, and advancing. Continue to fill our life with joy, peace, love, purpose, and passion as we continue to serve you. Continue to speak to us, our Father in heaven. Continue to freely move in us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Let me say tonight, you are God's kingdom people with kingdom purpose, fueled with kingdom passion, empowered by kingdom anointing, equipped with kingdom potential, and established in kingdom agenda, in God's kingdom agenda. So in the past two days, we learned that the kingdom anointing, the Holy Spirit, is actively working in us through our active participation in the kingdom of God. And we also perceive that the kingdom ministry that we are doing is founded on the finished work of the Lord Jesus. And we need to involve ourselves for growth and for our maturity. Tonight, I want to share about our authority as kingdom citizens, which is founded on the resurrected power of our King, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's open our scripture in the book of John, chapter 15, verses 14 to 17. So I will just give you five seconds to get your Bible and open it in the book of John, chapter 15, verses 14 to 17. And let me read it to you. It says, You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you these things I command you, that you love one another. Since we put our full allegiance on the Lordship, to the Lordship of the Kingship and Kingship of our Messiah Jesus Christ, we have surrendered our name unto His name. We have humbled down before Him as our King and we have pledged to fully obey Him in everything that we do. Yes, we have also embrace His purpose and live with it. However, as kingdom citizens, suddenly we miss our identity and we miss our position as followers of King Jesus. Why? Why? Our enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said in John chapter 10 verse 10a, And having said that, we are battling every day to regain our identity in Christ because the enemy, the devil, is trying to steal the truth of our identity. He is trying to steal the truth of your identity. And the devil tries to make us ignorant so that we will not live by the authority that we have in Christ. And he's trying to kill the good deposit that we receive from the Lord so that we will not function as God's kingdom people and therefore miss the opportunity to fulfill God's kingdom purpose. And what's next? He wants to destroy our testimonies 
so that we will not have an authority to advance and establish God's kingdom agenda. I just want to remind you that Satan, the accuser, the prosecutor, is trying to steal from us or keep us from what is rightfully and legally ours. Tonight, my desire is for you to walk on your royal identity in Christ and see that you are God's kingdom people with kingdom purpose, fuel with kingdom passion, empowered by kingdom anointing, equipped with kingdom potential, and established in God's kingdom agenda. Yes, we cannot discuss all these things because of time constraint, but let me focus on the text that we read a while ago as Jesus is talking to his disciples as the king who is willing to die for his people to demonstrate love, grace, reconciliation, and redemption. He said, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So we can see that there is a shift in our identity. God is making shift in our identity. During the time of Jesus, it is clear that every king who conquered a land will subdue and reign over its people whom he calls slaves. In other words, there is no mutual relationship between the king and the slaves. Instead, only subjection and subjugation exist between them. Hence, the Messiah who was promised to reign over all the earth Change the idea of subjection towards mutual relationship. What he said, No longer do I call you servants. I have called you friends. All things that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. So what does it mean? God is reminding us tonight that we are no longer slaves, but we should live our life with authority that he has given to us authority of our identity in Christ who calls us friends. The idea of friendship here entails the image of three important things that develop the idea of friendship that restore our identity. First is same mind. It means that we as friends of Jesus think like how he thinks. We fill our minds of His teachings so that we can follow His commandments. He emphasized, All things I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. The word known there is experiential and is partnered with knowledge. He wants to emphasize that you are experiencing what I am hearing from my Father and is now revealed to you. You can say to yourself, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Yes, so that we can be truly true friends to Jesus. He is calling us true friends because we have now the same mind. We think like how He thinks. Second, same will. Same will. Not just same mind, but also same will. It, manif it means that we desire what Jesus desires in everything we do. We would like to see the manifestation of His will over our lives. And we cannot follow Him if we are not sold out for Him. Yes, we cannot follow Him if we are not sold out for Him. And we cannot surrender our whole life to Him if we are not His true friend. We are no longer slaves. We have a freedom to follow the will of God in our lives. And we know and we understand God's kingdom purpose over our life. Why? Because we are now have the same will. We feel how Jesus feels. And we now see what He sees. And we can say to ourselves, I have the mission from Christ. I have the mission from Christ. And lastly, developing this kind of idea 
He is saying that we have the same agenda. Same agenda. Looking at the preceding text, Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you asked the Father in my name, he may give you these things I command you, that you love one another. Jesus, talking with his friends, reminds them that he's the one who does the choosing and not them. It means that he's the one who changed their identity and the one who gave them the mission to accomplish. He highlighted that he wants them to bear fruit and for those fruit to remain. So the imagery of bearing fruit here means to propagate or to multiply. In relation to God's kingdom, Jesus wants them to expand the kingdom of God to other people, to other people, for them to experience reconciliation, redemption, grace, and love. Hence, He is calling you. He is calling you right now to participate in this agenda of expanding the kingdom of God in any sphere of your life. Yes, He is calling you by your name to join Him in the expansion of His kingdom here on earth. And you can say to yourself, I have a calling to fulfill. Yes, you just not received the mind of Christ, you just not received the mission, but you have a calling to fulfill. So only as new creations in Jesus can we become the true men and women that we were created to be in God's plan. Only as we read the Gospels and see Jesus walking as a true man on this earth can we fulfill and fully understand God's pattern for our living and walking in absolute authority and dominion every day of our lives. I just want to remind you tonight, my friends, you are authorized as ambassador of Jesus Christ. Yes, you and I are authorized as ambassador of Jesus Christ because you have the new identity in Him. You receive the same mind, the same will, and the same agenda that results into the manifestation of the supernatural power, grace, and provision of God over your life, your family, your ministry, your work, and your community. Let this night be a night when you live with freedom and with authority that comes from the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is working and He is doing greater things in your life. He wants to manifest His power and His presence in your life. The only question for you tonight is, are you willing to step in to your ro royal identity in Christ and to see the demonstration of His presence, power, and authority so your life will be an avenue of His grace, love, reconciliation, and redemption to other people. You are no longer defeated. You are no longer defeated. You are no longer slave. You are no longer powerless. You are new in Christ. Amen? Yes, you are new in Christ. As a challenge for all of us tonight, do you want to walk in the kingdom authority that we receive from our King, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ? If you decide today to experience it in your life, you can join me in prayer. And let's ask the Holy Spirit to activate these truths over your life. You can put your right hand on your chest as you start to surrender your whole life to Jesus. As you start to ask the Holy Spirit to activate these truths over your life. So let me pray for you. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we ask you, come and saturate our life with your presence. We would like to walk in these truths 
and to live in the kingdom authority that we receive from our King, Lord and Savior Jesus. We speak tonight that you will live, that we will live in the same mind, in the same will, and with the same agenda with the Lord Jesus Christ as we are no longer slaves, but we are now friends. We stand on our ground as ambassadors of Jesus, as the ones who represent Him on this earth, and the ones who reflect His character and authority. We believe that this is the season. This season is a season of proclaiming our true identity in Christ, so that we can start to live faithfully as true followers of the King, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. May you keep us aware of your presence, Holy Spirit. We believe that we need you every moment. You are our counselor and the present help in every time of need. You are always willing to strengthen us, to empower us, and to enable us in doing the ministry and our calling. We surrender our whole life to you, Jesus, as our King and Lord as we keep proclaiming, Thy kingdom come. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us tonight for this Pentecost Power Conference on our third day. And continue to expect greater things that God is doing, that, that God is going to do in your life. Patuloy na may gagawin po ang Diyos sa inyong mga buhay. God bless you more.